<laughs> Guys, listen, listen, we do not have much time. You cannot listen to anything Azure tells you. It is nothing but lies. I haven't seen my family in over two weeks. Do you understand what that does to a man? They want to change us. They want to turn us into these, into these things. Like, who would want to ever do that? Okay, listen, they're coming back soon, so I probably am not going to make it, but you guys can. And you guys have to fight. And she is going to come. And I don't know exactly what, but she's bringing something big with her. Guys, I need it. What? No! Oh. <laughs> listen! Don't listen to anything they say! No! <laughs> Sacrifice, order, progress. Upon these words, we have built an empire. We have conquered the corners of the earth. We have bound our enemies to our will. The fate of the nations is held in our hands. This empire marks the pinnacle of humanity. An empire which you are now a part. But you, you are weak. Others see a blemish on society, I see opportunity. For generations, your people have been poor, fragile, downtrodden. But I will transform you. No longer will you be bound by the anemic chains of your humanity. No longer will you be subject to the cruelty of your own evolution. You are now a part of something greater. But with such greatness must come even greater sacrifice. Strength is born through tribulation. Progress is obtained through adversity. Your potential cannot be realized until your weakness has been burned. I will mold your body into something nature could not. I will shape your mind into a part of a greater whole. The hindrances of your humanity will be stripped away. Cast aside before the supreme efficacy of technology. The time of your ascendancy is at hand. Through your sacrifices are we all made stronger. Together, we will impose order on this chaotic world. setting of Arado, and what we've decided to go with is a futuristic setting in an alternate universe, but the technology level is on the same plane that we're at today. So there's iPhones, there's the internet, there's stuff like that. But the technology of the other force is a little bit more advanced. Going on along with that, the technologically advanced force basically comes in, and as you guys saw, basically enslaves the local population and basically turns them into slaves. Now what they do to these slaves, they do a procedure that's almost kind of like reverse LASIK surgery. So instead of like making you see better, it makes you nearsighted. And what this has done is an attempt to make sure that the slaves don't run away. And last but not least, is like I said with this reverse LASIK surgery, is that civilians are divided into separate classes. Some are laborers, some they take and move on to the next city to try to <coughs> enslave the next population. Now the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is Azure. Azure is our fictional uh, evil, evil uh, group, and basically they are a technology, technologically advanced race, and they, what they do is they try to come into these civilizations and impose technology into them. So stuff like cybernetics, biobiotics, and stuff like that are really, really inherent in all their technology. Now what happens is, is our main story, like in the video you saw, that there's this young girl that actually becomes separated from her family. 
And while she becomes separated from her family, she becomes very, very depressed. She doesn't want to do any of her work. And so when she doesn't want to do her slave work, basically what Azure decides to do is the most efficient way to get rid of these kind of um, people is to basically do lethal injection. It's the cleanest, it's the most effective methodology to get rid of anybody. So what happens is, is our main character, she basically becomes really depressed. So Azure decides to lethal, lethal injector. Sacrifice for the design progress. Upon these words, we have built an empire. I apologize about that. <laughs> so basically, what happens is our main heroine comes in and she's depressed. They're about to lethal injector, and all she wishes is that something would make it all go away. And when she does, she basically sells her soul and links it with our main playable character, which is the god of decay. Now, the God of Decay has many special powers, um, the main of that being the power of decay. Now, what we've decided to do with this monster is because since you're a god, well, why not just do whatever you want? Well, we've kind of gotten around a few things. So, basically, because their souls are linked, the player has to indirectly control the slave girl and protect her. The God of Decay must also stay within a certain radius for her powers to be effective. So this is just to prevent you know, the player running away and having whatever he wants. He has to stay and protect this girl because her souls are linked. And third, decay powers don't work on anything with a soul. We wanted to do that so you can't like melt soldiers. But you can still melt buildings, you can still melt trees. You can melt anything else besides something that has a soul. So now what we've got here is sort of a uh, simple diagram of how this mechanic would work. So let's say that this yellowish green circle in the middle is the heroine, is the slave girl. Now around here you'll see a small red ring, and what that is, is because she has this reverse LASIK surgery done to her, she can't really see far away. She can only see, you know, about from me to this chair. Now if the God of Decay somehow gets within that realm of being near her, she's going to be scared because it's this huge, grotesque looking thing. And so what they have to do is they have to stay near her, but not right on top of her. Now this blue area, is going to represent the area of effect in which you can move around the girl and your powers still be effective. So if the god of decay ventures out, his powers aren't going to work. He's not going to be able to decay stuff. He's only going to be able to decay when he's within the area of the slave girl. Now, some of the uh, ideas for the decay is we've kind of decided to do this timing mechanic where if there's a patrol of soldiers nearby, you're going to want to decay that part of the building so that it falls on them or blocks their path so they can't get to you. Now, there's a couple ways you can decay. First off, if you can sit there and you can channel it, and it's going to decay faster, or you can just kind of touch it with your decay powers and walk away and it will slowly decay. The most important thing, though, I want to talk about is this relationship between the monster and the girl. Because their souls are tethered, you know, he has to protect her. If she dies, he no longer exists in this world. So their souls are tethered in that way. Another great thing that with Narado is the personalities between the girl and the monster. While this monster is basically the god of decay, he's very carefree. He'll make jokes. You know, he'll laugh at things, you know, pure, you know, mortal humans. But while at the same time, the girl is very, very still depressed. So we've got this great mechanic, you know, with their personalities. And we'll be able to show that hopefully with some of the art styles in the game. Last but not least, I want to talk about the scope of the game. We feel that we've got a fairly decent scope with basically one level, and basically you start off freeing an encampment similar like what happened today. So that's going to be sort of our training ground, if you will, for you know our players. So you're going to free this encampment, and what you'll actually see is there will be a reward where the actual area in which you can travel will actually grow. Secondly, you're going to the main objective is going to be to try to exit the city via leaving the city wall. So we'll have this big climactic event towards the end where you're actually going to be defending you know, this girl as you walk across a bridge trying to escape the city. Now there will be several sub-objectives throughout the level as well. You can free other encampments which will actually increase the size of your radius in which you can travel. So there is a reward for freeing the other encampments, but it's not mandatory. I also wanted to thank today um, a lot of people put a lot of time and effort into this. Jacob, Aaron, Andrew, Joey, Jeff, all those people really did a lot to help bring this project to life. So I want to give them, first and foremost, a round of applause. You mentioned decaying the buildings. 
so you can follow along in the meantime.